Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I am doing a remake of my Sea Salt Spa Bars. And I'm excited because I found this at my local grocery store. Look at this gorgeous aloe vera leaf. So I'm going to blend up aloe vera gel to go in this and I will also use some aloe vera juice to sort of wet this down. But this I will water discount to make room for this luscious, lovely, aloe leaf in this soap today. Uh, these are so wonderful. I love a sea salt soap. And I get asked, you know, are they drying on the skin because of the salt? No, they are not drying on the skin. They're actually very luxurious, I think. Um, and they don't pull moisture out of your skin. There's something about the pH of the sea salt bars that is just it's wonderful. So for the sea salt portion of this bar, I will be using this pure sea salt. I got this at Costco, uh, and this one says that it is sparkling white, pure ocean sea salt harvested from the frigid current between Australia and Antarctica. So that's where this sea salt is harvested from. It's just gorgeous, and it's a very fine grind. So uh, these bars actually aren't exfoliating. They just have a really really soft feel on the skin. Uh, do you know water softeners for your home have salt in them and that makes the water soft? Well, this sort of has that feel on the lather too. It just feels very silky and soft. So that's the sea salt portion for the fragrance. I got this from Be Scented. It's called Sea Salt and Yuzu. I think that's a fruit. I don't know what a yuzu is, but this smells great. And the uh, reviews and the uh, um, little description said that it didn't cause acceleration or discoloration. Smells fantastic. It's got the sea salt notes in there to kind of go with the theme of this. Um, and for a color swirl, I will pull off a portion and color it. And because the sea salt is harvested from waters near Australia, I have my Australian Red Reef Clay. This stuff is hard to find. Um, I've had this forever. I will try to find an active link that's currently available. I think uh, somebody had commented on several videos ago when I used this that they stopped harvesting this uh, red reef clay and that's why it's like almost non-existent, hard to find. But I do have some and I'm gonna be using it. A little goes a long way. This is a very vibrant clay. Um, and it colors really well. So <laughs> this stuff is like gold to me. I'm gonna use just a little, but it's beautiful. That's gonna be a color portion for the swirl in this. I'm gonna use my little flower molds because sea salt bars firm up really fast. You can do them in a loaf mold and cut them into bars, but you have to watch it like a hawk and cut it right after it firms up or they get crumbly. And I just, you know, I don't really have time for that. So I'm gonna do little flower molds, individual little palm sized bars for these which I love. So I'm going to get everything pulled together. I'll bring you along as I prep my aloe vera leaf to go in this, uh, the aloe vera gel from the leaf. Um, I'll show you how I'm going to get that all blended up and ready to go. Let's get everything pulled together, get my hair pulled back, and let's make some wonderful sea salt spa bars. All right, let's get into this gorgeous plump aloe vera leaf. I, I've grown aloe vera before, but I have never been able to grow a leaf this big at home. So I was delighted when I found this at the grocery store. So I'm going to get the gel out of the inside, put it in here, and I'll add a little aloe vera juice in there and use my stick blender to puree it all up. But I'll show you as we go. So I like to kind of do it in little bite-sized pieces here um, just because I find it easier to manage. So I take off a chunk and I like to get the ribbing off here. This is such, it's so like, I don't know, satisfying and delightful. It's like kind of viscous and I don't know, I think aloes are amazing. And then just kind of run my knife along the skin edge here. I should probably have a bigger knife, but we'll make do with this one.
All right, so I just have a little pro tip for all these scraps here. Um, first of all, it's wonderful. You can rub it into your skin. Aloe vera is fantastic, but um, these would brown up and not last if you just left them sit here. But what you can do is actually put these in a Ziploc bag, individual baggies, and freeze them and then pop them out of the freezer if you get a sunburn or whatever, because there's plenty of that wonderful aloe vera gel still on these leaves. So you don't have to waste all these wonderful peelings. I like to just freeze them individually into little bags and just stack them up in the freezer and you can pop them out as needed. And um, then you have aloe vera at the ready. So uh, nothing goes to waste here as this is all fantastic and will be frozen for a later use. All right, so here's all my fabulous aloe vera gel. And here is the aloe vera juice that I use when I'm not doing actual plant gel. I buy this at, uh, I get it at my local Walmart. It's very inexpensive. It's like five bucks for this big gallon jug. But I'm gonna add a little in here just to make it uh, blend a little smoother and a little easier to measure. So there we go. And now I'm going to stick blend this up to a super smooth puree. You could use a, you know, magic bullet or a ninja if you have something, a blender. But down in my soap studio, this is what I've got. So this is what I'm using. And it blends up really easy. You just want to make sure there isn't any chunkage in here. You want it smooth. So I'll just keep blending until this is fully smoothed out and then we'll get to measuring. So it's time to add all the additives to my oils and butters here. And let me tell you what's going on in this pot. I have 48 ounces of coconut oil, six ounces of castor oil, three ounces of cocoa butter, and three ounces of shea butter. That's what's going on in here. What I do is I measure out the hard oils, melt them, and then I added the castor last uh, just to kind of cool it down. It's a little bit warm, but I think after we get all the additives in here, it'll cool off a little more. So for the additives, what I've ended up with is, let's start with the aloe vera gel. Here is my brimming, this is 10 ounces, and I actually was able to use all of the aloe vera gel. So this is 10 ounces of aloe vera gel that I'm gonna add in here. And I'll tell you about the lye solution since I'm go I water discounted. I'm using 8.2 ounces of lye and 10 ounces of aloe vera juice is mixed for my lye solution. And then this is 10 ounces of aloe vera gel. So it's 20 ounces of liquid all together with 8.2 ounces of lye, which is a little higher water than I normally use, but because of the salt and everything, this moves along fast. So I use a full water on this recipe. So here goes 10 ounces of aloe vera gel in here. And it is so luscious. This, these are just fantastic. All right, so that's in there. And now I have my kaolin clay and colloidal oats, which I normally use, and I'm gonna add some coconut milk powder. I always put that in my sea salt spa bars just because I, I think it's wonderful. And I love the lather on a coconut milk soap. So there's my kaolin. Here goes my colloidal oats. These are two tablespoon scoops. So these are two tablespoons each and coconut milk powder. Because why not, right? Let's just do it. It's so good. Oh, this coconut milk powder smells really good too. Uh, the reason for the high coconut oil in here is because coconut oil will lather with salt. Um, when you make a sailor bar or 100% uh, coconut oil soap, it will lather in salt water. It's one of the only soaps that will lather in salt water. And because this has such a high salt content, and I want the lather, so the castor oil helps support the bubbles and the coconut oil helps make the bubbles. So anyway, I'm gonna get this blended in and uh, let this cool just a bit and then we'll get the lye solution and get rolling. All right, it's time to add my aloe vera lye solution. So again, this is 8.2 ounces of lye, 10 ounces of aloe vera juice in that jug that I got. Um, so to the aloe vera juice, I added a tablespoon of cane sugar, dissolved it, 
and snipped up some tussa silk fibers, then I poured the lye in there and melted them. So that's what's going on in here. Uh, this does not need sodium lactate because of the salt. These are rock hard soaps, so no sodium lactate in this today. But anyway, that's what's going on in this little pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, get this up to a light trace, and then I will add the fragrance and the salt and then I will split it up for my Australian Red Reef Clay Swirl and we'll pour it into the molds. But uh, you just want to proceed, you know, cautiously because of the high coconut oil. This has a lot of hard oils, so it can go fast. And the salt, when I add the salt in there, that'll make it speed up. So, you know, you just want to treat it with respect. I'm not even, I'm not even pulsing this. I'm just kind of hand stirring. There we go. And to this volume, I am gonna add this entire container, which is 30 ounces of sea salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and just plop her in here, get it in, and in goes my fragrance. Oh, it smells so good. Uh, the sea salt yuzu, I think, is a dupe of satsuma or some Bath and Body Works scent uh, just smells fantastic it's got citrus notes and oceany sort of ozone notes it just smells great and again i'm not pulsing the stick blender at all here i'm just stirring it and i'll just do a little because I, i'm going to need to mix it when i get the color in there so i definitely don't want this going quickly on me and we definitely have emulsion so, I'm going to go ahead and split our three. I want to split this almost evenly, so I'm going to go one and a half liters over here. That's one of the things I love about these big um, poly containers is they have measurements on the side, so I can kind of, you know, ballpark what I'm doing. Here's my red reef clay that I just had mixed with a teeny little bit of water to make it, you know, clumpless, <laughs> hopefully. There we go, and I'm gonna put that stirred in. And as soon as I get these blended up to a nice, you know, trace where the salt is suspended, we'll get to pouring. And that's looking pretty darn good. Yep. Oh, that color is gorgeous. All right, let me just give this a quick I think I even need to blend these. There we go. Jump over here. All right. Calling that good. All right, it's the next day. Uh, I probably could have unmolded these several hours after I poured them. They got hard really quick. It was a bit of a mess getting them in here, but I'm very hopeful that they're gonna look cute on the flower side. So let's get a few of these out and see <laughs> what it looks like. You know, that's salt soaps for you. Um, you can actually hand stir them and not blend at all and have it go a little slower than I had, but hello, aren't those cute? And they smell so good today. That fragrance is wonderful. Sea salt yuzu. And I, I believe yuzu is a fruit. I said I didn't know what it was, but I think it's a fruit. 
Um, but anyway, how cute is that? All right, let's get some other designs here. Ah, oh, so cute. I love these. All right, I'm going to pull out one of these where it started getting thick, and I had to uh, do an in-the-pot swirl because it started getting thick. But look, even those are beautiful. So I have some that were the half and half and some that are marbled, but I'm loving it. Uh, let's see. Here we go. Oh, that one's pretty. I kind of like the marble look, too. And then there is a half and half. Oh, so fun. All right, let me get these unmolded and then I'll show you how I clean them up. All right, I'm back with all of my awesome sea salt bars here and you know I'm wondering about um, using the aloe vera gel uh, when I use aloe vera juice I've never had trouble with that causing acceleration but I'm wondering if the gel kind of aided in that too but anyway I'm glad it's in there <laughs> so um, there's two ways that you can do these uh, to clean up the bottom so they're a little rough on the bottom I am not going to plain these because um, it's not they're mostly smooth and I don't want to lose the soap volume but you can come in with the vegetable peeler. Here, let me move this up so you can see. And go around the sides. This is the next day and it's not too crumbly yet. And just get that sharp edge off there so it's comfortable in your hand. I personally, I don't like sharp edges on my soap. So that is a nice, comfortable feel on your hand. Now, if um, for some reason, if they feel too crumbly for that, another way to do it is to take a clean damp this is this is clean fresh out of the laundry it's a little stained these are my soap room rags so they do get stained over time but this is clean and i just damped it with warm water and you can come along with the edge here and just do uh, that on the edge to smooth it out too if it feels too crumbly with the peeler So they're all cleaned up and they're going to go on the curing rack for about four to five weeks before I wrap them. And I've got a couple wrapping options I wanted to show you. But first, let's take a look here at the marbled and the half and half. And I think they are both equally beautiful. I'm happy with both of these. Um, there's one of these and let's see. So there's a marble and there's a half and half. So I think they're all really awesome. So let me show you. When I have little palm-sized round soaps, I have two options. One is I use these natural unbleached coffee filters, and it gives me a finished look like this, and I just use the label on there as a sticker. Um, and these are wonderful, but you can't see the soap in there. You can smell through these, so that's kind of a nice benefit. That's the coffee filter. And then the other one is I shrink wrap. Sorry about the glare on there. I shrink wrap it. So I will probably shrink wrap these just so you can see the soap through there, but these are two uh, ways that I wrap my round soaps. So there they are. Enjoy the recipe. If you make this and love it, I'd love to hear back from you how you uh, enjoy it and um, give it a try and have a great day.